The Nose by Jim Poyser, based on the short story by Nikolai Gogol. Morning, dear. Oh. And good morning to you, my love. Don't start. <laughs> Pour me some tea, will you? What's up with you? What's up with me? I've been a barber for 38 years. That's what's up with me. I thought you liked it. Oh, every day's the same. Haircut after haircut after haircut. But that's what barbers do, Ivan. Cut hair. I know that, dear. I know that's what barbers do. I'm not complaining about the definition of a barber. I'm complaining about being a barber. You've got your friends down there. Oh, they're not my friends. They're my fellow inmates. <sighs> All they ever talk about is hair and stubble. Hair and stubble and lather and strops. Oh, what does it all mean? Sit down and have your breakfast. These rolls are lovely and warm. Oh, oh, if only something interesting would happen to me. You got that new short fur jacket, didn't you? In 1835 I did. That's nine years ago. Hardly the life of an international playboy getting a new short fur jacket every nine years, is it? I didn't even like that jacket. Oh, you say that now. What was wrong with it? Too short and too furry. Well, you know what's worse than being a barber? Being repeatedly shot in the face by the army. Being married to one. Oh. At least you get to leave the house. I'm stuck in these four walls day after day. No, you're not. You're always round at Agafia Fedorovna's. Well, stuck in her four walls. You went to the seaside together the other day. <laughs> oh. Hang on a minute. There's something in this roll. Hmm. Quite thick it is. What on earth can it be? I didn't put anything in the rolls. Oh, my God. What is it? It's a nose. What do you mean it's a nose? Look. <gasps> oh, my Lord, Ivan. It's a nose. It's a human nose. In the bread roll. What have you been up to, Ivan? What have I been up to? What have you been up to? You cooked and you're the barber. <gasps> What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're the one wielding a cutthroat round gentlemen's faces all day long. What? And I just surreptitiously took someone's nose off one day without anyone noticing? Well, that's what it'll look like. Oh, this is terrible. If this gets out, I'm finished. Well, you said you wanted a career change. Yes, ah. yeah, but I don't want to end up in the Petropolovsky slammer, do I? A little bloke like me wouldn't stand a chance in there. All those Circassian bandits. Makes me weak just thinking about it. You'll have to hide it. Where? In the house? No, Ivan. I'm not having that thing in the house a second longer. Wrap it up in a handkerchief and take it down the river. The river? Anywhere. Just don't leave it on the table. It's just lying there. I feel like it's looking at us. Hang on a minute. Oh, no. I think I recognise that nose. You drunken beast! What have you done? It's Kovlyov's. I shave him on Wednesdays and Sundays. It's collegiate assessor Kovlyov's nose. Porfiry! Porfiry, come here this instant! What's the matter, Mr Kovlyov, sir? Look! Look at my face! What about your face? My nose! It's gone! Oh, God. Yeah? So it has? So it has? What's that supposed to mean? My nose has vanished! It was small to begin with. Uh, what? So having no nose at all is hardly any different? Crikey, what am I going to do? I've got my assessment with the head of department this week. Fat chance I've got a promotion now. And what about Mrs Potochkin? I had hopes of marriage. Mrs Potochkin's a bit old for you, isn't she? Not to her, to her daughter, Katerina. Well in there I was. But she's not going to let her only daughter marry a man with no nose, is she? No, I suppose not. Let's still look on the bright side. At least that cold you had coming on won't be any bother to you now. I even think of the money you'll save. Handkerchiefs, nasal air clippers, snuff. I don't use snuff. People might spend their time with half a pound of old Fafitchkin's shag rammed up their nose in Susdal or whatever bog it is you're from, poor theory. But here in the city, we have a little bit more sophistication. Yeah, all right. There's no need to get personal. It's not like I nicked your nose. I wouldn't put it past you. Yeah, well, I didn't. Hey, does it mean you can't smell? Well, of 
course it does. What do you think I smell with normally, my Boris Petrovich? Uh, well, you never know, you being a member of the nobility and all. Mm, yes, well, admittedly, when you reach the rank of major and serve the Tsar as a collegiate assessor, it does rather set you above the hoi polloi. Maybe my nose is more refined. Not anymore, it's not. Oh, don't torment me. What am I going to do? Don't know. Join the circus? Oh, very funny. Come on, help me look for it. Where? In the flat. It's got to be here somewhere. I had it when I came in last night, definitely. How do you know? Well, I can't be 100% certain, but I seem to remember blowing it. Mm. Have you looked down the back of the settee? Good thinking. Right, you look there, and I'll check the bedroom. Here. It's a good job you don't wear spectacles, sir, isn't it? <laughs> Right. Got to get rid of it. Get out of the way, sir. You're in the middle of the road. Uh, where's the bridge? You're on the bridge, stupid. Come on. God. OK, then, Mr Kovalyov's nose. It's a watery grave for you. One, two, three. Oh, no. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here, then? Right, Porfiry. You look to the left, I'll look to the right. Well, this is all plus, sir. Uh... No, it isn't. It's not in the flat, not in the stairwell, so it's just a case of retracing my steps back to work. What? All the way to the Ministry? Well, that's miles away. Well, anyone could have picked it up, done Lord knows what with it. Poor theory, if you saw somebody's nose lying in the street, would you pick it up? No, probably not. Exactly, you'd leave it lying where it was. Ah, uh, well, I'd probably see if I could boot it down a drain, or, or even better, set fire to it and put it through someone's letterbox. Yes, well, mercifully, most people have got a bit more about them than you. Poor fairy, they'll have either left it where it is, or on the off chance they did pick it up, they'll have taken it to the police station. Don't half look funny with that bag on your head, sir. It is not a bag, it's a cow. That I put the vegetables in when I go shopping. Yes, well, maybe if you thought to ask before going through my wardrobe looking for items of headwear that might double up as containers, you'd know the difference. Belong to my uncle, yes? Greengrocer, was he? No, he was a monk. What? From the holy order of putting a bag on your head? Oh, hang on a minute. What's this? What? What? Have you found it? No, sorry. It's a sausage. Half a sausage, actually. Well, don't touch it. Why are you picking it up? You're not going to eat it, are you? Oh, cracky. You peasants are just so vulgar. I'm not going to eat it. I thought it might act as a temporary nose for you if we can't find the real one. Bit of glue, bit of paint. Oh, great. That's really going to cut a dash at the next Imperial ball, isn't it? Sir! Sir! What is it? That carriage, sir, across the street. Well, what about it? Look at who's getting out of it, sir. What are you talking about? I don't know that man. Never seen him before in my life. Come on, help me look behind this bin. But, sir... Look again. I have looked at him, I tell you, and I don't know him. Oh, my God. Poor fairy. Can it be true? I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, sir. It's not a man at all. It's my nose. I don't believe it. Disguised as a state councillor. Are you sure it's not a titular councillor, sir? No, no, no. Definitely a state councillor. Look at the plumes on his hat. And he's got a sword as well. And notice the uniform has both gold braid and a high stand-up collar. Mm, yeah, nice trousers. They look like chamois. Where the hell did he get a pair of strides like that from? He's walking off down the road, sir. I wonder where he's going. Into the bloody tailors, probably. He's got a nerve. He's walking at a bit of a lick, sir. Come on, let's get after him. Yes, let's. Good idea, Porfiry. Come on, quickly now. Watch out for that lamppost, sir. Oh. That'll be that bag on your head. It's a cow. Why the hell has he come in here? Well, don't ask me, sir. I'm just a humble peasant. I don't know why you know should dress up as a state councillor and come into the Kazan Cathedral. What's he doing over there? Well, 
looks like he's playing to me, sir. Judging by his expression of profound piety. Hey, what's happened to your back, your cowl? Bloke on the door wouldn't let me in with it. I thought it was a monk's hat. Yeah, I tried arguing. Oh, you know what doormen are like. He said if I actually had been a monk, it would have been different. Oh, bloody favouritism, I call it. Just because you go and live in a shack out in the woods and eat loganberries from dawn till dusk. Thought that was more hermits. Monks, hermits, whatever. Look, look, we, we've got to speak to him. To who? To Mr Noseman over there. Do we have to? Come on. Poor Fury, this isn't easy for me, you know. Not every day you have to have an argument with your own nose, but this is a matter of honour and of principle. If you say so. What are you going to say to him, then? I'm not entirely sure, poor Fury. He seems very deep in prayer, sir. You'll have to attract his attention. Well, how shall I do that? Hit him? Not when he's praying. Besides, he'll just run off if I start on him. I need to be more subtle. <coughs> Oi, you! What do you want? Um, uh, my dear sir, I don't know how best to put it, sir, but it strikes me as very peculiar. I mean, don't you know where you belong? And where do I find you? In a church, of all places. <laughs> I'm sure you'll uh, agree with me. Please I... forgive me, sir, but would you mind telling me what you're talking about? Explain yourself. <laughs> How can I make myself clear? You see, when you reach the rank of major and serve the Tsar as a collegiate assessor, it's not really done to be walking about the place without a nose. Uh, it's all right for some old woman selling peeled oranges on the Voskresensky Bridge, maybe, but I'm hoping to be promoted soon. Besides, I'm acquainted with several highly placed ladies. Mrs. Potochkin, for example, who is the wife of a state councillor. <laughs> I'm well in with her daughter, Katerina, I can tell you. <laughs> and you can judge for yourself what effect the absence of a nose might have on such a person. What are you saying? <laughs> What am I saying, Porfiry? A matter of honour and principle, sir. Good point, Porfiry. Yes, sir, forgive me, but you must look on this as a matter of honour and of principle. And what do you mean by that? Well, you can see for yourself. I can't see anything. Please get to the point. My dear sir, it's plain enough for anyone to see, unless you want... I... Don't you realise you are my own nose? My dear fellow, you're mistaken. I'm a person in my own right. Furthermore, I don't see that we can have anything in common. Judging from your uniform, I should say you're from another government department entirely. Now get out of my way. Well, I... Get I, out I, of it! Oh, oh, did you see that, poor fellow? He pushed me. Of all the damned cheek, not only does he have the temerity... Sir! Let me finish. Not only does he have the temerity to jump off my face and walk around the city, not only... Sir! Not only does he have the cheek to refuse to talk to me, but then he pushes me. And that after I'd resolved to engage in a non-violent confrontation. Oh, crikey, I can see where all this is leading. A duel, a court-martial, scandal... Sir! What? He's just run out of the cathedral, sir. Has he? Right, that's it. That's what? I've had enough of this. I don't care whether he's a state councillor or not. I am going to the police. Hey, I've just thought of something. What? Your nose is running. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Who is it? Are you the Chief Inspector of Police? I might be. Who wants to know? My name is Major Kovalyov, sir. And uh, uh, who, who's he? It's my servant, Porfiry. Well, get him out. Out, I say. What did I do? I won't have members of the lower orders in my office. Tell him to wait outside. Uh, Porfiry, uh, be a good chap and wait outside, will you? Great. And that's the thanks I get, is it? I tell you, one day things will change in this country. The workers will rise up against their complacent masters. Yes, yes, well, who cares about that, eh? Go on, run along. Pleading subjugation of the proletariat. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Now, what do you want? I was just settling down for my afternoon rest. Oh, yes, I, I noticed the, uh, the bed. Mm. Um, I have something of a problem, sir. Is it uh, connected to that bug? What bag? On your head. It's a cowl, actually. And yes, it is connected. If I just take the cowl off, you'll see. Look. What is it? My nose is gone. Oh, yes. So it does. And uh, what do you want me to do about that, then? Well, if I told you about a certain so-called state councillor I'd seen at the Kazan Cathedral... Oh, come, come. We don't want to go dragging state councillors in, do we? I'm not saying he was genuinely a state councillor, but he was dressed as one. An imposter, eh? Well, that makes it even more complicated. Sounds like a lengthy investigation to me. All manner of bureaucratic hurdles to get over, and then there's the Tsar to think about. Hardly seems worth it. How can you say that? Look at my nose! Look, Major Kovalyov, it really isn't the time to start an investigation. It's three in the afternoon. It's important to rest after lunch. In fact, it's more than important. It's an iron law of nature. But what about my nose? Well, all I can say is there's no end of majors knocking about. And some of them are in the habit of frequenting the most disreputable places. But I, I haven't been anywhere disreputable. Well, you would say that. Now, if you'll excuse me while I get into my nightshirt. But there, there must be something you can do. Yeah, well, give me 50 rubles and I might start thinking about it. You mean a bribe? No, I just mean give me some cash or I won't do a damn thing about it. That's not a bribe in my book. Hmm, your book's obviously not a dictionary, is it? Flipping heck. Oh, here's 50 rubles. Oh, there's nothing finer than banknotes. They don't need feeding, they slip nicely into the pocket, and they don't break if you drop them. That's what my Uncle Ozip used to say. Oh, did he? You'd better solve this. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll get my best bet on to it. Straight away. <sighs> All right. Yeah, see you then. Yeah, jolly nice to meet you too. Good day to you, sir. Come on, poor Philly, we're going. Who was that you were speaking to? What a great bloke. Well, who was he? Not sure, but he was very interested in your nose. Asking me all about it, he was. Well, so long as he wasn't a journalist. Oh, no, no, he wasn't a journalist. A journalist wouldn't have a notebook, would he? Mind you, he did have that badge. What did it say? It said press, but I tried pressing it, nothing happened. Oh, God, that's all I need. Name plastered all over the papers. Sorry, sir. Look, I promise I'll make it up to you. It, you could start by finding the other nine-tenths of your brain. Tried pressing it and nothing happened. Well, don't worry, sir. I, I'm sure if the press do get hold of it, they'll be sympathetic. Read all about it! Horrible, disfigured freak roaming street! Read all about it! Gruesome, noseless weirdo on the loose! Oh, Porfiry, Porfiry, what have I done to deserve this? Uh, if I'd lost an arm or a leg, it wouldn't be so bad. Even if my nose had been lopped off in a duel or something. Do you want me to cut you up a bit? Make it look like a wound? You're too good to me, Porfiry, really. Oh, who can that be? You didn't tell that journalist where I lived, did you? Of course not, sir. No, oh, it's Mrs. Pottochkin. Where's my cowl? Sorry, sir, I used it for the shopping. It's in the kitchen full of watermelons. Well, what am I going to do? I don't know. Just put your hand over your face. Oh, God! Good morning, my dear Major Kovalyov. Awful lot of people on your stairs. Good morning, Mrs. Pottochkin. Uh, people? What kind of people? Sorry? It's hard to tell what you're saying with your hand over your face. He said, what people? They all had badges with press written on. Uh, and don't tell me, when you pressed them, nothing happened. Don't be absurd. I took them to be journalists. Someone famous in this building, is there? Porfiry, you're... <laughs> what did he call you? A, a really lovely fellow, I think it was. Well, if he'd just move his hand. I say, if you'd just move your hand. Come on, give it here. Get off. Move it. Get off me. Get off me. <laughs> You'll see my nose. <laughs> Come, come, there's no need to be alarmed. Do you think she's alarmed, Porfiry? Maybe a bit. Look, Mrs. Potodkin, calm down, please. Oh, you've got 
got no nose? Yes, you're right, I haven't. Just a sort of flat space? That's a pretty accurate description, yes. But you used to have one. When you came courting my daughter Katerina, you definitely had one. Look, I know this may have come as something of a shock, but you won't tell Katerina. Don't you think she'll notice? I thought I'd lie low for a bit. I can't make any promises. You're not her only suitor, I can tell you. Not by a long chalk. Collegiate assessors, titular councillors, Cossacks, queuing up for a piece of the action they are. And they've all got noses, I bet. To a man. Now, I'm afraid I'll have to tell her. It's not like she won't find out for herself anyway. All these journalists. I presume they're in the building to see you. Well, uh, there's that bloke upstairs with the funny hand. Hey, Mr. No Nose! Coglio! Shall I go and tell him about the bloke with the funny hand, sir? Oh, Lordy, they're at the door. I have no wish to be implicated in this, and they're sure to recognise me. Whatever will I do? What will you do? At least if they get an artist's impression of you, there'll be a nose in the picture. I haven't even brought my shawl. I could have wrapped it around my head. Have you got a hat I could borrow? Or, oh, tell you what, even better, some sort of cowl. Is it all right if I just leave the watermelons lying loose, sir? Read all about it! Horrid, unknown gentleman identified! Repulsive, snoutless fellow is Major Kovlyov! Read all about it! How long have we been holed up in here now, poor fairy? Two days, sir. We'll have to go out eventually. We're running out of watermelons, for one thing. Yes, and you can't have too much watermelon turnover, can't you? Oh, I thought you liked my watermelon turnover. As an occasional, not a staple, poor fairy. Don't know why you didn't get some sausages or a nice bit of brisket. Yeah, well, watermelons was all they had. Well, if you will shop at only watermelons. Oh, listen to us, poor fairy, bickering. At least we've got each other, haven't we, poor fairy? I'd like to see you trying to cook a turnover. Oh, no, not again. Go away! I've told you, I'm not talking to any journalist. I am not a journalist, I am a policeman. What do you want? I've got something for you. May I come in? <gasps> of, of course, uh, Porfiri. Quick, move all this line. The place is a tip. Oh, yes, sir. Straight away, sir. Oh, come on, Porfiri. No hard feelings. I love your cooking, really. You treat me like a lackey sometimes, sir. But you are a lackey. That's your job. Lackey. You can always go back to Susdal and work in the dung mines. You wouldn't send me back there, would you, sir? Just clear up the flat. Sorry about that. Do come in, Inspector. Smith, sir. Oh, that's not very Russian. Uh, my father was a Westerner, sir. French, I think he was. But anyway, are you the gentleman that's lost his nose? I sure am. Well, it's been found. Oh, thank you. Thank Lord! How did you find it? Very strange it was. We caught it just as it was about to drive off in the stagecoach to Riga. Its passport was made out in the name of some civil servant. Funnily enough, I mistook it for a gentleman at first. Where is it? I'll go right away to claim it. Don't excite yourself, sir. I knew how much you wanted it back, so I brought it with me. And very strange, but the main culprit in this little affair seems to be some barber, Ivan Yakovlevich. Ivan, who shaves me on Wednesdays and Sundays, I can't believe yes, it. Yes, yes, it's the Petra Pavlovsky slammer for him, I'm afraid. He's down at the station now. I've had my eyes on him for a while, to be honest with you. He's been ripping off a happy dashes on Vosnesensky Street. I can't say too much, but we've found buttons. And to think I trusted him. But anyway, sir, to business. What kind of business? My nose, sir. Oh, right you are. I've got it in my pocket. Oh, no. I, I've, I've lost it. What? Nah, only joking. Oh. Here it is. There you go, mate. Your very own nose. Thank God. Reunited at last. Poor Philly, come and see. Oh, sir. Can it be true? Oh, yes. I, I could Kiss it. Do you think it's all right, kissing your own nose? Well, I don't see why not. Well, isn't that what the Eskimos do? It's not illegal, sir. Even under this current czar, who, frankly, is a bit strict. Mm -hmm. My beautiful nose. Right, now, let's put you back where you belong. Et voilà. Ah, 
it's fallen off. Mustn't have put it on right. Hold on, let's give it another go. Et voilà! Et voilà! Oh, God, what a fool I am. Why did I think it would stick? It's definitely the right nose. I would beat myself, I did. Maybe it'll stick if you try it later. You mean at the same time my fist sticks to your face? There's no need to be like that. I tell you what, shall I nip out and get some glue? Oh, do they sell glue in only watermelons? Probably not come to think of it. Even if they did, I can't just glue it on. This is hopeless. Do you want me to take it away again? Well, uh, what does it matter? Do what you like. Hopeless it is. Hopeless. Oh, life of ruin and despair awaits me. <laughs> Hopeless it is, hopeless, a life of ruin and despair awaits me. Come on, sir, you can't spend all day hiding under the bedclothes again. It's been two weeks, you've got to get on with your life. Oh, what's the point, poor fairy? Come on, out you come. Ah, get that light off. It's the sun, beautiful sunny day it is. Oh, sir, your nose. What about it? It's grown back. Oh, don't mock me. No, I'm not, but I'll get the hand mirror. There you go. Look. Can it be true? Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. It gets better, sir. There's a note from Mrs Patochkin just came through. She wants you to go on a paddle steamer with her and her daughter. Round the Gulf of Bothnia. But I thought she disowned me. Well, apparently she's your number one fan now, you're internationally famous. The man who lost his nose. The man who lost his nose and then regained it. In spectacular fashion, sir. Right, I'm getting up. Get the breakfast on, poor theory. Gulf of Bothnia, here I come. Oh, my God, sir, you've grown a tail. What? Joke, sir. It's a joke. Kovalyov was played by Stephen Moore, Ivan by Mark Chatterton, Porfiry by Jason Doan, and The Inspector by Russell Dixon. The Policeman was played by David Krellin, Mrs. Potochkin by Bridget Forsyth, and Praskovia by Emma Clark. The Nose by Jim Poyser was based on the short story by Nikolai Gogol and produced in Manchester by Susan Roberts.